All right, our polysatin product, our program. This was a product that was launched into Australia in 1966, 1996, I should say. So obviously been in the market here now for over 20 years. Under the brand Vogue shutters at that point, this was purchased by Hunter Douglas in 2008. And we've actually, in nearly 10 years, grown this product to be quite a substantial player in the shutter market. All the extrusions for polysatin are manufactured in, the, in Canada and brought in, and we then fabricate them into the finished product that you see. Now, these shutters are custom made to consumer requirements in our manufacturing facility at Yatler in Queensland. Polysatin are ideal for all applications, inside, outside, for wet areas, and are covered by a 20-year warranty. And they're one of our most maintenance-free window covering products that we have. Measuring for this shutter is the same as all shutters that we sell. You give us your opening sizes and the factory makes allowances. So in a reveal scenario, if you're measuring a reveal, you give us your opening size, you tell us you're fitting it in reveal, tell us the frame, obviously, we make the allowances. It's the same on face. If you're measuring on face, edge of architrave to edge of architrave, we will make the allowance, tell us what frame you want, whether you're fitting it on face, and we will make any allowance required to make the shutter. Now, corners and bays are as per the measuring manual and what you see on your pricing app as well. Now, polysatin does not have specific bay and corner posts. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the presentation when we look at our packers and our light block extrusions that you can utilise to fill in gaps in that scenario. Windows and doors, bathrooms, wet areas, great for room dividers, great for patios, and they're also great for external screens as well. So it's a product that can be utilised right throughout the home, inside and out. We moved to our poly satin finish now about 18 months ago, so we have that nice matte, almost timber look finish, which creates obviously a more acceptable look to the market. Hinged, probably the most common scenario, hinged shutters in windows, bifold and bypass, which is the sliding shutters. Now, we're going to play some videos and share those videos with you throughout the course of this presentation to cover off the installation side of things. But we want to look at all the different framings and all the options as well. So what is polysatin? Well, it's now called polysatin 3, and it's a unique colour fast compound with UV stabilisers. It has strength and durability that exceeds any traditional outdoor vinyl material or product. So it's not going to shrink, it's not going to chip, it won't peel or fade, and obviously maintenance is very low and there's never a need to paint the product. So it is virtually maintenance free. All of the extrusions, the frames, the louvers, they're all hollow, so we get that added benefit for insulation and also for heat. Now, when you're selling the product, your in-home selling kit consists of, obviously, the big black shutter bag. And in that bag, you have, obviously, a panel. And you have pieces of all the relevant frame, track, louver, and component samples so you can show those to the consumer. The other thing that you should also make sure you've got, and again, this was made available several years ago now, but the folio kit. Now, this really talks over the benefits of the poly satin finish with a great picture book allowing you to share with the consumer some great images of what the shutters can look like. So they're the selling pieces or the selling components that you should have when you're going out to sell this product. Louvers come in three sizes, 64, 89, and 114. Obviously, the bigger the louver, the better the view through. Obviously, the bigger the louver, obviously, the actual bigger the span that you can do as well. Colours for the louvers, the 114 mil louver comes in two colours, which is white and pearl. 64 and 89 come in white, pearl, and vanilla. So those are the three colours, but only two of those colours are available in the 114 millimetre louver. Now, when we look at a panel and we talk about the tilt bar or the operation, there's the main one that we have is what's known as clear view tilt. Now, I've got the panel here, which I have here. 
this has a clear view tilt. Now, opening the actual panel, obviously it gives you an almost unobstructed view through the poly satin shutters. Can be rotated 180 degrees. So we get full rotation here with our poly satin shutter. It's not very common in the industry to have that full closure. Most shutters will close one way, but only close partially the other way. So you have that full 180 degree rotation. So this is a clear view tilt bar. So connected at the back by a solid rod, but as I said, almost unobstructed view through the poly satin shutters. Just gonna sit that there. You then have Smart View. Now, Smart View was introduced about 18 months ago as an upgrade. It has a rack and pinion gearing system which lives within the actual style of the frame. So you don't see any visible tilt bar mechanism. So this rack and pinion system here lives inside the frame and connects to each louver pin. Now this gives you greater direct control over moving all the blades much more easily. It provides a completely unobstructed view through. You don't see any tilt rod connector whatsoever. Still provides the 180 degree rotation that we have with the smart view. It's a great upsell. Depending on the size louver that we've got, it's either a 20 or a $30 non-discountable surcharge per panel. So it's a very small cost to upsell to something that's quite a nice smart finish. We still have traditional tilt bar. I'll just show you what I mean by that on this little shape one here. Traditional tilt bar, it's a bit of a timeless look. You can either have it obviously to the left, center, or to the right. Again, it gives you the full 180 degree rotation. We honestly don't do a lot of those but it's still an option there for people who might be matching something in the home who, or people who want that more timeless look. When you come to light control, we, we all admit that shutters are a great product for controlling light. Directing light, getting some light to come through, but maintaining privacy by angling those louvers at a certain direction. But they're not designed to be sold as a block out window covering. These are room darkening and block out up to about 80 to 85%. So as long as people understand that, then obviously that's fine. But remember, with any shutter product, any louvered product, you get what's referred to as, we refer to it as light bleed. So between every blade, along here, along every blade where it meets the next blade, you'll get an uneven little tiny strip of light bleeding through, and that's characteristic of shutters, whether it's our product, our material or uh, anyone else's. So with the shutter, we have divider rails. The poly satin product requires a divider rail as soon as that panel goes over 1500 in height. So that means you can have a 1500 high panel from here to here and have one bank of losers, louvers, losers, louvers controlled all together. But as soon as I go over 1500, I need to split that and I need to put in a divider rail to strengthen up and give stability to the overall panel, which means I have two independent banks of louvers that will operate. Now, this mid rail or divider rail is the same size as an individual blade, but its location might vary slightly up to half of that louver in size. Now, normally you're going to call up a divider rail where you have a horizontal mullion in the window. You measure up from the bottom, measure to the centre of that mullion, and we'll obviously get the divider rail as close to that point as possible. We have two different divider rails. We have a standard and we have a deluxe. Now, when you're ordering hinged shutters, the standard divider rail is supplied. Now, it's flush, flat, both sides. When you're doing a bifold or when you're doing a bypass or a slider, you'll actually get what we refer to as the deluxe divider rail. Now the deluxe divider rail gives you the ability to put your hand in and it acts as a handle. So you can either open the bifolds or slide the bypass. 
you can move that around and you can ask for the deluxe on a hinged shutter if you like, but you need to tell us because we will only put the standard on hinged and we'll put the deluxe on bifold and bypass. Now you see there the sizing there. They do come in two different sizes. The larger one here is what we use with 64 and 114 mil louver. So with 64, that takes the place of two louvers, or it takes the place of one 114 mil louver. And obviously this one here takes the place of one 89 mil louver. We have two part hinges. It's a great feature that we have with the product because the two part hinge means really easy to install, but it's even easier for the consumer to take that panel out, to take it outside for cleaning. And it's a simple thing as walking up to it, opening it and lifting the panel off. And you have that now as an item that can be taken outside and easily cleaned. Being polysatin, obviously it's not affected by water, moisture, so taking it outside to clean it, really straightforward. I'll just quickly pop that back in. There you can see, once the frame's in position, very quick, easy to install as well. Now we're going to look at the different framing options. We have an L frame. Now an L frame, all in front of me in here in order, let's hope I pick them up in the right order. So an L frame is a piece of extruded poly resin, poly satin material that's shaped like an L. It really is designed to be fitted on base. So it would mount directly on top or beside the architrave. You can use it for a reveal, for an inside mount, but you do need to make sure that that opening is fairly square. And if it's used in that scenario, be prepared to put some gap fill or some caulking in there to hide the gaps or cover the gaps that will be left by that. But it's quite common practice for people to want that L frame in a reveal to give a nicer flush look. You can get L frame extensions and if you probably can't see here but what we've got mounted behind me here is a two panel shutter. I've got two frame extensions on it which have enabled us to bring it further away from the wall because we needed to have the clearance behind so obviously we could operate the louvers. Those frame extensions are nice simple extensions which are pieces that slide onto the back of the L frame. So they slide on. So I can pack it out up to five extensions of 13 millimeters. So I can move it away as far as I need to. So that is really good to enable, or to, sorry, to ensure that we've got full rotation with the blades if we have any obstructions in the way. We then move to Z frame. Now, Z frame is shaped like a Z, as you can see here by that. And it really is designed for reveal fit, for those inside mount scenarios. It can blend in quite well with lots of different types of architraves, and it's the right choice to use if we've got slightly out of square windows. Up to 10 millimetres out of square, you'll easily be able to, able to cover with the Z frame and this extended leg here, which will cover any imperfection. So that would go on, Trevor might just get you to zoom over to that spot here. So if this was, I guess, an opening, then obviously you would see that that Z frame there would sit there and cover any gaps which would be created here. We then have a trim frame. Now a trim frame, again, it's a style of Z frame, but we call it trim. Now, this is something that you would potentially use if you had a squared off opening, dip rock, drywall, no architrave, because this in its own right creates a bit of a decorative look. So you can actually use that in that scenario. You have another one as well called the D frame. Again, used probably more, more than not for the square set opening where you don't have an architrave and you want to create a type of architrave where you've just got a square set window. All of these 
Z style frame, so the Z, the trim, and the D, they can be combined with our trim sill frame. Now, if you've got a window opening that comes down, and obviously at the bottom of that is actually a sill, they're an older style thing, but it's not uh, not uncommon not uncommon to come to come across them. You can combine any of these frames with a sill frame at the bottom. So when you look at actual what is known as the L part of that frame, you can actually see that the trim sill frame is exactly the same dimensions. So I could have a three-sided deluxe frame and I could have a trim frame at the bottom. So trim is a slimmer, sleeker version of an L frame designed to be used on a sill. Now, you can use that sill frame on all four sides if you want to. It is slimmer, it is sleek. Can't use it on face because it's not thick enough to get a mounting screw through to fit. But you can use that for inside mount. So it's a sleeker version of an L frame. People don't like the bigger L frame. Now we have various mounting strips that come in various sizes. Sometimes you might need to pack something up to lift the frame above, say a bath or something in a bathroom, or you want to use something as light block out if you've got corner panels that are meeting um, in a corner. So light block out comes in four different sizes, 19 by 19, 25 by 19, 12 by 19, and six by 19. Now, all extruded poly resin, poly satin material that can be used as gap fillers or packers anywhere that you feel you might need them. Now, you won't get those unless you actually order them up when you're ordering your shutters. T posts. Again, the shutter we've got behind me here, which I'm going to partly pull apart during this presentation, we've put a T post in it. A T post is a structural component that's inserted vertically into the frames of a shutter for added strength and if we want to hang, I guess, more panels within one frame. Now, the T-posts are going to be spaced equally throughout the frame unless you tell us otherwise. Normally, your T-post is going to line up with some vertical window mullion or the vertical frame of the window. Sometimes the window that slides is smaller on the left and the right and this middle section is bigger. So your panels might end up being different size, but if you don't tell us, we're going to make them all the same size and your T posts um, obviously will be, will be evenly spaced. When we supply a T post to you, have a sample of that here in front of me as well. So here we have a, a sample of an L frame and this is the T post. Now everything that comes from the factory is all notched, drilled, ready for you to assemble. So you don't have to work out where the block goes to hold the T post. The holes are already pre-drilled and it's marked, but you will need to screw those on. Now, the screws that are used in a lot of the connection of the actual shutter together for poly satin, they're screws with a Robertson head bit. And you will need to make sure you've got that bit in your toolkit to enable you to tighten those up and secure them. It's not a Phillips head, it's not a slot screwdriver, it's a specific headed screw that you need. So that's obviously a L frame traveling along, along the bottom. Here we have the T post coming along, notched out, and it will come along and it will slide on and sit on that L frame. If I turn that there, you'll see a screw here, a screw hole, I should say. There is a screw provided that you would put in there. It does two things. When you fit these blocks to the L frame, they're not done up completely tightly. They're left slightly loose. They have some flexibility to move a couple of millimetres to the left or to the right because you want your T-post to sit nicely and have an even gap with your panel. The screw that goes in through the side does two things. It enables you to move that little square block, plus it also securely joins 
those two pieces together. As I said, we'll remove this shutter partially later in the presentation and we'll have a look at those things together as well. Now we can do shapes with this product. I had a sample here I held up earlier, a triangular shape. You can do obviously elliptical arch shapes, you can do circles. These are available and it's the same componentry and profiles and extrusions that we use for all of the polysatin product but we don't manufacture these in our Yatla factory. These are custom made and shipped in directly from Canada as a finished item. So the lead time on shapes is a lot longer than the lead time on a normal rectangular shutter that you would be getting from Yatla. So if you're ordering shapes as part of a job, just, just keep that in mind. As I said, we've got behind me here, the hinged version here. I'm gonna start to take it apart just to point out a couple of things to you. I've already done the, I guess, remove the panel with the two-part hinge. Lift them off nice and easily. Sit them to the side. As I said, we've got here a small shutter. We chose to put a T-post in to show you how T-post works and what it does. I had a panel hinged to the left and I had a panel hinged to the right. So the configuration of this would be an LTR. If I wanted to, I could hinge this panel off the T-post, which would make it an LTL. So the L and the R refers to the point the panel is hinged from. We fitted this frame here. I've purposely not inserted the screws into the top. Just going to tap the top frame off. Now I'm going to play a video shortly of assembling hinged um, shutters and what you would normally do is you would put the frame together and you would put the frame up in its entirety in the reveal or on the wall but I wanted to pop that off for one reason one was to show you that what we've got here we might zoom in Trevor if we can on that we've got two frame extensions here this is to build the frame out to give us more I guess flexibility and give us the room to operate the louvers and it's not something that stands out as being odd or unusual. The frame extensions work really well. They're exactly the same dimensions as the base of the L frame. And again, you can see here, we have our block that we fitted to the top there, which slides down and connects to our, to our T post. So Trevor, I might get you to, we're gonna play the, it's the assembly of the hinged shutter just to talk through a couple of the key things that you need to be aware of. Assemble frames ensuring left and right frames are on correct sides as labelled. Drill a 3 8 hole through the first layer and in line with the top of each hinge on the frame. Use a 1 8 drill to drill right through for a pilot hole. Insert the plastic corner keys on top and bottom frames first. Insert T-posts at marked positions if required. Slide the top and bottom frames into the side frames. Use cork to seal any minor gaps on corners. Place frame in opening. Pre-drill wall or architrave. Insert a screw in both the left and right top side frame holes. Then centre the frame in the opening. Drill the screws into the jam, but do not over tighten as to distort the frame. Hang panels with upper and lower hinge pins only. I will just point out at that point, you would have seen them drill a pilot hole. When we fit polysatin or polyresin product, we drill through the first skin of the frame with a 3.8 drill bit. Needs to be 3.8 because that's the size hole that will accommodate the plug or the cap fitting in there nice and snugly. It needs to be 3.8 and you then put a screw through or you drill another hole through and you put your screw through to secure the frame. What we're going to do now is play the install video for bifold and I'll just point out a few features from that as well. Frame using 75 millimeter screws through the top of frame lining up the screws with the screw line indicator on the frame. 20. For recess or face mount drill a 3 8 hole through the first layer it is, it of the is. side of the frame within oh. the mounting area every 250 millimeters starting at each end of the frame. 
For recess mount, fasten the top of the frame to the reveal opening and level. Plumb the side frames and fasten. For face mount, set the frame against the wall, level the top and screw. If the configuration has all the panels stacking to one side, then install the pivot on the stacking side. Insert all the wheels, one every two panels. If the configuration has the panel stacking to both sides, then install the correct number of wheels before fixing a pivot to both sides. If it is a floating system, there are no pivots. Instead, insert wheels to the value of the number of panels less one for each bank of panels. Mount the track by drilling through the pre-drilled holes in the track into the screw line on the top of the frame. Mount the bottom pivot in line with the indicator line. Align the bottom track between the pivots or in line with the screw indicator and secure with screws. Insert bottom guides into the bottom of each panel that has a wheel. Then hang panels and insert all hinge pins. Attach the balance by drilling 3-8 holes through the front layer, 13mm from the top of the 64mm louver and space every 500 millimetres along the length. Install both valance and side returns with screws and cap holes. All right, guys, just a couple of things I'll point out there with the, with the bifold. Obviously, bifold is a one-track system, and we have a headboard and we have a side frame, which is the same extrusion. So you would have seen that little one there installed within a reveal. If you don't want to use the top headboard in a reveal scenario, you can, you can do that, and that track can just be attached directly to whatever the ceiling or the top is that you want to fit to. Just let us know when you're ordering it because we've configured in the extra height of the headboard with our overall drop configuration. The frames do have, again, frame extensions that will work, that will enable you to pack that frame out a little bit further if we're on face. That same packer or a, a, um, a extension is available and fits the bypass sliding track as well. But bifold is your single track. And the valance that goes on a bifold is a standard 64 millimeter louver. And you saw the way they fitted that, pre-drilling some holes, screw through the louver, and then some caps to dress it off. We'll look at the bypass sliding one now. And then I'll point out a few different things with tracks versus, um, with an internal versus external application. Assemble frame using 75mm screws through the top of frame, lining the screws with the screw line indicator on the frame. For recess or face mount, drill a 3 8 hole through the first layer of the side of the frame within the mounting area every 250mm starting at each end of the frame. For recess mount, fasten the top of the frame to the reveal opening and level. Plumb the sides and fasten. For face mount, set the frame against the wall, level the top and screw. Insert wheel carriers into the track, two carriers for each panel. Mount the track by drilling through the pre-drilled holes in the track into the screw line on the top of the frame. Align the bottom track with the screw indicator and secure with screws. Engage the bottom guides into the channel of the bottom tracks. Insert bottom guides into the bottom of each panel then hang panels. Attach the valance by drilling 3 8 holes through the front layer of the valance, 13 millimeters from the top of the louver. Install both valance and side returns with screws and cap holes. If you're fitting this on face and you want to build this out, you must have these side frames to help support the top headboard. As you could imagine, the headboard in its own right with the panels basically suspended by the two tracks and the runners would create a lot of force and potentially pull that down. So you will need to have your side frames to suit that. Now, the Valance on a bypass slider is your 89mm louver. You can call up the deluxe valance if you want to dress it up with something a little bit nicer. So you have got those valance options as well. Now I mentioned I was going to point out the difference in bottom tracking 
when you have a product that's sold and fitted internally versus externally. Obviously the size of that bottom track and the size of the plunger pins that are in the bottom of the panel. Obviously the external product has a much bigger track and that enables you to use a flush bolt. So again, the external applications will probably be subjected to a little bit more wind. You would use a flush bolt to lock down into this track to secure the actual the bank of louvers in place. You can put them at the top, the bottom, wherever you like. It really is up to you. I'll just also point out that when you are selling poly satin shutters for external applications, that you call up and ask for one comb per bank of louvers. Now the comb is designed to lock onto the louvers. Okay? Because in high wind applications or high wind scenarios, it needs to keep the louvers open to allow the wind to pass through to make sure that it doesn't blow the shutter apart. Shutters, poly satin shutters, are designed up to 50 kilometer per hour winds. But certainly above that, you need to uh, you need to be conscious of what you might be selling in those circumstances. Before I move on to look, have a quick chat about some of the information that we provide you, are there any questions there, Trevor? Or, or I know we're rushing through yeah. this because there's a lot to talk about with poly satin product. There are uh, two questions, which I've asked them just to hold till now. So they've been there for a while in one case. Uh, first question was, are we ever going to see a corner post for bay windows? I, I don't know the answer to that. To extrude something to suit that like we have for the timber, there's nothing that I'm aware of, um, I guess, on the, on the horizon for that. And I, I would probably say no, unfortunately. And the second question, do the slats clear each other on sliding you know, bypass uh, shutters in the open position? You can have the 64 mil blade on the... No. Trevor, I'm going to get this wrong now. Um, they're designed to be closed. They don't clear each other. You need to have slats or louvers closed to be able to bypass the panels. If you were fitting tracks only, if you had a wide room divider area, if you were putting tracks independent of the headboard and you had room to space them apart, you could certainly space them, if you had the, the width to do it, you could certainly space them and configure them to clear in the open position, but not with our standard headboard, unfortunately. Okay, just want to move on and quickly talk about some of the information, some of the test data that we have available to you guys that obviously can help when you're selling the product. We have UV stability and degradation information. We've got fire retardancy certificate. We have some wind loading information and some thermal insulation as well as acoustic insula in insulation information. We have done accelerated testing. As I said, this is a product that's covered by a 20-year warranty. And in fact, in Canada, they actually go to market with a 25-year warranty. The accelerated UV testing that we've done, which is equivalent to 20 years, shows the product with no obvious degradation whatsoever. It's not going to discolor, it's not going to deform, twist or warp. Timber products certainly will in that period, but the poly satin product will not. From a an FR from a fire retardancy side of things, it's got a very great, very good um, reading for the spread of flame index and also the heat evolved. Spread of flame index range of 0 to 10 is a 0, and the heat evolved, for, again, the range 0 to 10 is a 1. The ignitability index sits about mid-range, but we have got those FR reports and that data available, available if people do need to see it. We know from the research that we've done, from a thermal insulation point of view, that it has the ability to reduce the heat through a window by up to 50%. We know that it can also bring down noise levels by up to three and a half decibels. Much better also when we've got higher frequencies is, is, is its ability to also actually block out some of that sound. I mean, I guess people say, well, what does that mean? What's three and a half decibels? And I guess the difference as opposed to mowing your front lawn, as opposed to mowing the lawn of the house next door, would be the same as having your louvers open or closed. So just closing the louvers 
will reduce that noise by three and a half decibels. So that obviously is, uh, um, you know, something that's important, I think, to tell people. The fact that it is hollow acts well as an insulator for thermal properties and as well as with acoustic properties. Now, I mentioned the product is designed and it's been wind tunnel tested up to 50 kilometre per hour winds. So certainly above that is not an area that we would recommend a product for. And again, external applications should always be ordered with combs to lock the louvers in the open position during those periods of high wind.